Hey guys, welcome to Photo Factor. I'm Jade Hurling. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a composite. I'm going to share a little bit with you my workflow of selecting images within Adobe Bridge, taking them into Camera Raw, making a few tweaks, and then bringing them into Photoshop and playing around to get the results I want. Let's dive straight in. Just a, a quick overview of my workflow. You'll see here I have both my cards uh, inserted into my card reader as well as a work folder that I've already created. I am then going to drag across or rather just copy and paste all the images into the relevant folder. Um, and then I'll do the same from the other card. And whilst it's doing that, I launch Adobe Bridge. And then you can see the images are good for review. From here, I just give the images a star rating. As per which ones I think I'll probably end up using. And I do that simply by giving it a one star over here. And I will do the same in this folder over here. So once I've made my selection, I've gone through all the images. And I, I've settled on this one. It doesn't, I haven't knocked out the focus uh, or shot as shallow, shallow a depth of field as I would probably like the end image to look but I'm going to attempt to knock out that focus in post so now that I've made my selection I'm going to double click on it it will automatically open up in camera raw uh, over here I will just have a little look around um, zoom in zoom out it's pretty nice and sharp I'm happy with that uh, what I might do is just add a little bit of a vignetting like that something like that perhaps just go into maybe drop the exposure slightly um, I might want to lift it here a little bit the exposure just that area and once I'm happy with these adjustments, I go on to open the image and it will now open up in Photoshop. There we go. So now I have the shot of the camera that I'd like to use. Uh, but you'll notice because my camera has been put to quite a bit, uh, fair amount of use. There's quite a bit of scuff marks um, and dust and a few scratches that I'd like to get rid of. So the way I go about that is I make use of a combination of my patch tool as well as my clone tool. And I slowly make my way around the entire camera um, either using the patch tool or the clone tool, like I said, and just getting rid of all these marks. It's a bit of a time-consuming process, uh, arguable whether it's entirely necessary. Maybe the aged uh, or the used camera is a bit more authentic. Um, but for the sake of the tutorial and also getting the image just how I would like it, I'm going to work my way reward making the camera look brand spanking new. I have decided <laughs> partly because I'm a bit lazy but also because I think that's sufficient. I have cleaned up the, the camera with the clone tool and the patch tool to a point where I'm happy with it. I now would like, I've already made the path, I've made a, a path around the camera which I'd now like to activate. Let's just say that part before I forget. Um, the path is now activated and so just that area is selected in the image. And I would like to go back to camera raw 
filter and just make a few slight adjustments so it's natural that the, the color of the wood and the surrounds would reflect back into the camera but I'd like to just take that down a bit and so yeah under saturation I'm going to take that down maybe the blues as well a bit mm, I don't want to do it too much I want it to still look realistic I might just want to punch punch that red in the R and on, on the lens maybe take that those reds into less of, a, on, of an orange and make them a bit redder like that once I'm happy with that click OK and just toggle between how it was it's very slight but I'm happy with that what I need to do now is just have a look at the image overall I'm happy with the way the camera is looking uh, there is some dust here on the table maybe that's worth getting rid of I'm not gonna get carried away here because yeah I do want it to look natural I'm not sure what the end crop will be I'm kind of liking the composition as it is one thing I am noticing is here under on the rug below the table there is a shadow from from the table leg which I'm not loving um, and so what, I'm going to try and remove that and the way I'm going to do that is use my pen tool you could use your lasso tool or whatever tool you're comfortable with to do this just kind of cover that area select it give it a, a good feather which just softens the edges of the selection I don't know, make it something random like 11 I'm gonna hide the selection using Command H it is still there and what I'm gonna do is attempt to just lift those shadows a bit just a little bit and so if I zoom out So you'll notice that there are uh, these lines here now that I'm not absolutely loving, but I'm preferring that. It's less distracting for me. We're going to uh, create a depth of field scenario, or at least uh, try and make the image look like it was shot at more of a depth of field than what it really was, which I think... which I think will hide that to some extent. The other thing we can do is now that I've done that, I can use my history brush and the way that works is I click on here, um, select my history brush, brush uh, Y being the shortcut to key. Go back a step, it's still selected here, just zoom in there. And just brush it back in. And so what I'm by doing this, I'm trying to avoid that that unpleasant line that we're getting. It's still there. Um, but I think now compared to how it was without that. It's subtle, but I prefer that. Now that we've done that, we can improve that even further by going on to the next step, which will be to create the illusion that we've shot this actually at a shallower depth of field than what it really is. So the way we do that is we We've already got a selection there around the camera that we created with the pencil. I activate that selection using the, the command J feature on my keyboard shortcut. I now have the camera as its own layer. So by making use of the marquee tool, I now make a selection 
in the foreground of the camera as well as what will ultimately be the background of the camera. I give this a feather, a rather large feather, and I now make this its own layer, just that, that area I had selected. And I am going to go to Filter, Blur, Wash and Blur. And just give that a slight blur. Can you see that? Look, have a look at the plant. That's where it's most visible, I imagine. I'm happy with that. I am now going to take it even further, actually. Again, make a selection in the background. A bit more in the foreground. Again, repeat the feather. Put that again on another layer and repeat the blur process. And so what we get is the illusion of a shallow depth of field. Because the camera is on its own layer, the camera that was on the original layer is still there and also blurred and then bleeds into behind um, the the uh, camera layer itself and so using a bit of cloning we're going to clean that up let's just flatten that use to clean that up just so that the camera doesn't have this blurry haze around it And once we've done that, once we've completed that, we would have fixed up this messy area on the carpet and also created the shadow depth of field effect. I think at this point it's worth just taking a look at the work we've done. This is what we started off with. And just to recap, we've added a vignette. We've cleaned up some unwanted areas on both the camera and the table we knocked away this sh unpleasant shadow over here and the result that we've ended up with is an overall much more pleasing image here we go we're done with that and now we need to work on the image of myself that we're going to drop into this image we've saved this as a camera psd file or rather the title is camera and we've saved it as a psd file the bridge and we're going to have a look at the images that I want to drop in of myself into the camera pick. I've made my selection here of these two images. I have starred them and so I'm going to double click on them, open them up in camera raw. I'm pretty happy with the exposure. We can still tweak it once it's in place. I'm going to open them up into Photoshop and what I need to do is make a rough selection around myself. I'm just using the straight edge lasso tool. Any tool will do. The reason I'm not bothering to use the pen tool is because once we bring it in to the image, Uh, we're going to transform it to a size that I'm happy with. Maybe something around there. And you'll see it, it's so small that it's not really necessary to have pin sharp accurate selections. And so I just use the one tool, select the areas and I don't want delete delete that away. Use my eraser tool and delete any further 
unwanted items. Make sure my eraser tool has got a, a sharp edge. You can off, obviously soften or harden it. Make sure it's a hard edge. And just work my way around the image, erasing any of the unwanted areas. I've already done so. Pretty much, I'll just finish up here with this guy. And there we go, we have little me busy cleaning the lens of the camera. I might just want to go into my levels. Come on, I'll bring that up and just tweak, tweak a little bit. Um, Peripheral closed. And there you have it. You would have noticed that I also have this image of myself, which will serve as the reflection, which I'm going to then throw into the glass area of the lens. We don't need a super accurate selection, maybe even less so due to this being just a reflection I want to throw back into the glass there. Make sure it's behind. And you will notice there is some discrepancy. And exactly how accurate I've lined the two up. That's okay. Um, it's just to give an impression. If we screen that, the levels down on that a little bit. Drop the opacity. And again, erase away any of the unwanted areas. I think you'll agree that it is sufficient enough to create the impression of a reflection in the glass. We need to create some shadows uh, just to plant mini me into the scene properly and there's a few places we're gonna have to do that uh, I would be most likely casting a little bit of a shadow onto the lens area itself and so the way I'm gonna do that is to select the layer which I am on use the one tool Select outside of myself, inverse it, inverse the selection, and then just drag that selection over the lens area. Give that a, a feather, and go onto the camera layer. Whilst the selection is active, use Command J to create a layer of that area I want to darken. Using my levels, or rather, let me use curves for this. Using my curves, I'm going to just 
off from there. Once you make it too dark, you always make it a bit darker later on. I think that will do. And the next thing we need to do is create some shadows on the surface of the table. There is a bit of a discrepancy here in the sharpness of my shoe and the grain on the table, but I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. Um, and so I'm going to just use my lasso tool, um, use the freehand version, and just create a selection. Roughly as to where the shadow would be under my shoes. Doesn't matter if it's not accurate. Just creates a slightly softer feather. I am on the background tool. Again, Command J, duplicate that. Um, select black as my default. Go to brush. Make sure this layer is then locked. Um, use a multiply and just and so now I've got shadows under my feet, but they're too soft, they're too hazy, they're too vague. And so now using my eraser tool again, not quite such a sharp edge, not quite so big. Then I need to unlock that first. Just to erase some of that, which I don't want there. And now we've got shadows under my feet. We need to add some shadows by, uh, caused, created by my legs. And for that, I am going to again use the lasso tool. This time, the straight edge, go back to my background layer. And I need to follow the shadows created here by the lens. So, let's zoom in a bit. like that. Then for the other leg, this will be a softer feather than for the feet. Um, oh, we, should, we erased some of that shadow. So we'll keep it at six. Again, duplicate that by using Command J, lock the layer, Bring my brush tool. Now we've got shadows for my legs. We need to erase away some of that. Unlock the layer. Soften the edge. And I have what I feel is a result I'm pretty happy with. I'll go to file, file, save, which is something we should be doing all along the process. We don't want the computer crashing or something midway through the process. Remember to save your file all the way through the process. And there we have what I feel is a happy end result. And that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope you learned a thing or three. 
please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, invite your friends, and I'll see you soon.